evaluations, one which we take out as people who run the workshops, and then evaluations we might eventually present to third party. And those are slightly different, uh, different types of information. Uh, but um, what QUATA stands for, it's um, Acronym Enhancing the Quality and Transparency of Health Research. And we basically set up the program about 10 years ago, and the key goal was to support better, better publication of medical research. And I'm sure it, that is relevant to other, uh, other fields as well. Um, people do lots and lots of medical research. They involve us as, as patients. We volunteer, we take risks. But then what then gets described in, in research literature doesn't really reflect doesn't really reflect what has been done. And in, even if we now live in a very high-tech era, research papers are still key vehicle of how scientists communicate. And uh, if you, you don't need to describe everything, but you need to signpost pe people to sources of indicator, to sources of information about your research. And the key principle is that all the key information about your methods and in our case, about clinical uh, details and, and your result has to be in the paper or has to be reachable. And very sadly, it's not happening. And it's not happening to such extent that uh, people start questioning not only the quality of medical literature, but the quality of all science, because there's some evidence that what people don't describe and don't usually do, and, and so on. So the problem is suddenly a lot more complex we're hearing more and more stuff around reproducibility of science, which is really very widespread problem and doesn't really relate to medical research. Medical research, um, in a way, is heading all this because it hits headlines first. So and so die because of this flaw. So, uh, but those problems are generally uh, widespread. But because medical research is ahead in, in this improvement initiative, ten years ago. Um, Longer. People started developing help, and, and the help came in, in, in very low, low key forms. Like you going to the supermarket, you write yourself a shopping list so you don't forget everything what you what you need to bring home. Uh, scientists, methodologies, clinicians started developing what we call reporting guidelines, which basically provide lists of scientific items people have to describe in their research reports, so other people can assess it and make sense. So you have certain um, methodology features, like in, in the case of randomized controlled trials, you need to know how people were allocated to the group, how they were randomized, who knew what, who didn't, because that really impacts on your results, this question of biases and so on. So uh, there are very good reasons. And those reporting guidelines, they've been developed for all types of studies, mostly used in health research. And when people developed them, the console one was the first, <coughs> and that actually penetrated software engineering community as well, because as, as, as far as I know, um, people in, in your community also adapted this, this, this principle, so your research experiments are described in a better way. Um, when people develop those guidelines, you just we publish it, people realize how wonderful it is, start using that, and will be sorted, and that didn't happen. So 10 years ago, we everything together and we've created a resource website where people can go into one place, find what they need, help them with writing their research papers, and we started running train, training. Um, we, we have quite a good recognition. Uh, we have roughly about 30, 35,000 users every month on the website, and it's really growing. It's a long time, but there's a clear, clear rise, and now large number of medical journals either ref refer people to our website or to individual guidelines. So this, the recognition is growing fast. And um, so our, our workshops, what we do, we because there's so many parties involved in research publications, you have people who do research, clinicians, researchers, um, then editors, uh, peer reviewers, you have funders also. So lots of people influence the quality of research and research publications. So we have quite a diverse audience and we run different types of workshops. Um, we run short events from two hour workshops to hold.
information which was requested from students to be described was complex. Those who had those prompts described it in a more complete way. So if somebody asked you, was your study blinded or not, and the answer is yes or no, it didn't really matter if you had any prompts or not. But when they asked them, how was the randomization done, and you need to include five different elements to correctly answer, then obviously the prompt is useful. So even if you run this type of education as an experiment, what you end up with is, again, immediate feedback. We don't know how much these students would retain the knowledge or if they would go and use the tool again. So I think that's the, one of the really crucial questions I want to bring at the very back is this long-term
especially socially healthy, which is on the other side of the map, so the only part of that room. 